Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another timeless pick a card reading. In today's reading, we're going to explore what the universe might ask from you. If the universe has a question for you, what would it ask? Okay, so it's a really interesting question, this, and we're going to explore it together through the cards. I'm really excited for all of these groups. They're all fantastic. So pick from between group one, group two, or group three, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group one. If you chose group number one, then you are in the right place. So you've chosen this beautiful quartz crystal, rose quartz. Take a look at that. Hold on. Here we go. Isn't that absolutely stunning? I love these crystals. They have turned out to be so good. I bought them online and I wasn't sure what they'd be like, but they're amazing. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't. There are quite a lot of people who come and watch these. And what I like is to just go through the cards one by one and let you see what comes into your intuition because certain things will occur to you as I go through these cards. So we've got the sun upright. Isn't that beautiful? We have Treasure Island over there. Number nine as well. So something's really coming to a culmination. We've got the chariot upright. We've got the Knight of Wands upright. Oh, okay. We have the Honk of a Horn coming from the outside. <laughs> I'll leave that in. I've had to stop and start this one a couple of times today, so it's interesting, interesting energies. The Moon upright. Got the symbol for Cancer there. We've got the Magician, upright, hold on. And we've got the Two of Swords, upright. Okay, what do we have here? Well, this is a beautiful spread. The first thing to say is that all the tarot cards from one, two, three, four different decks, they're all upright. So that's pretty amazing because I do shuffle the cards really, really well. <clears throat> what else do we have here? We've got a lot of creative energy. So these two are massive creative powers. And I feel like the universe is wanting to say to you that you are a very good manifester. You've got the ability to manifest the world of your dreams. You've got that within you. And I feel like the universe is saying, for me, the universe is kind of talking through these four cards for you very much. And it's kind of saying, I'm going to help you get to your treasure very quickly, if you would like. Okay, so we've got speed here. We've got speed on the table because the knights represent really, really fast energy, especially the Knight of Wands, the Knight of Swords as well. Knight of Pentacles is super slow, so that's a very different energy. If we got the Knight of Pentacles here, there'd be a very different story, but this is kind of fast, hot, creative energy. And it's almost like the universe is wanting... Yeah, I feel, I feel like the universe wants to ask you, okay, I... I'm going to give you acceleration. We can, we can go for it. We can really go for it. And we can go fast if you want to. But what I need to know from you is what direction are we going in? And I feel like you're in a place in life where there's something about indecision there's something about, and I'm getting that from this card here, indecision. And perhaps you'd like a bit of 
time to think about it. I feel like you don't necessarily, and you see, you're going to want time. We've got the moon here. You're going to want time to contemplate. You're going to want time out. You're going to want to sink into your intuition. You're going to want to take this very seriously. If the universe is saying, come on, we can, we can create anything you want, but you have to tell me. Interesting, there's some cars going down the road. It's been really quiet. I hope it comes up on the, on the audio. But yeah, there was just this car going down the street. Like, <clears throat> I get the sense that the universe kind of wants to say, I can make it happen for you, but you have got to decide. And it's kind of this thing where like, it's like, okay, we could go fast in this direction. We could go fast in this direction. Whoops, sorry, flower. We could go fast in this direction, but you have to tell me which direction, because I don't know. And the universe is like, I can accelerate things for you. I can make things, we can, we can do this, but you've got to instruct me as to exactly the direction and exactly what it is that you want. And there might be some hesitancy. There might be a need for some time out. Okay, there might be a need for a bit of time out to, to really think about what do I really, really want? It's an interesting one. And sometimes when we contemplate this, I was thinking about this earlier and I was thinking about how you're a bit like group three in this group. Some messages from group three might be good for you as well. I was thinking about how what we want, you know, it, how long will it satisfy us for? Let's say we wanted, I don't know, a new car or something like that. It wouldn't be too long before we start to want the next thing and we do have to be careful when if the universe is saying look I can make anything happen for you but you've got to tell me exactly what it is you want sometimes it's difficult isn't it sometimes it's difficult to choose or to say because because then the responsibility is on us and if we don't choose well well it's on us, you know, it, that's hard. And, and one of the things I'm picking up here is definitely some Gemini energy. And I don't know why particularly, but that, is, that has been coming through. I, I saw these briefly in the morning and then I got busy with a whole load of things. But I remember when I looked at this earlier, I definitely got some strong Gemini energy and a strong feeling of indecision, a strong feeling of, I don't know exactly what it is that I want. And it's kind of like, you know, with glass blowing and, and how you have to act quickly and then you have to, or pottery or something, there's this thing of you have to act quickly and then when you put it in the fire or you put it in that place where it sets and it becomes final, that's it. And it kind of feels like you're in some kind of moment where you're being asked to choose, to choose a direction to choose something in particular. And I do feel like the universe is saying to you, what do you want in a specific way? And the universe is kind of saying, I have got the energy for you. We can make this happen. We can do this. But you're going to have to tell me what. And then we'll go for it. Then we'll accelerate. Then we're going to make it happen. Let's take a look at the song lyrics and see what comes through. I'm really interested to see what comes through for this group. This has been such an interesting reading because it's like, yeah, I, I think the universe is crediting your manifestation powers as well. The universe is kind of saying that, look, you're a brilliant manifester. You can do this. You can create whatever it is that you want. Sometimes that can be so scary. It's like when you get the blank canvas and sometimes that can be a really scary thing when you've got a big wide open blank canvas. And it's like, you can freeze. You can be like, God, I could do anything. Sometimes that's too wide open, isn't it? Um, sometimes it can be really difficult to choose. Okay, there's some indecision. Some choice needed and there's some indecision. That's really the message that I'm getting. And the universe wants to know from you, you know, what do you want to do? Oh, how amazing. This is so cool. Okay, let's have a look here. Why live life 
from dream to dream and dread the day that dreaming ends. One day I'll fly away, Randy Crawford. This is such a beautiful song and this is really perfect for this because did I use the analogy about buying a new car? You see, I had to stop this halfway and abandon the previous take because my voice started to block up. So someone here might need some root chakra, uh, not root chakra clearing, gosh, I can't do that. But, <laughs> but I can certainly, with the throat chakra, there seems to be throat chakra clearing happening uh, through when I speak sometimes. Um, so somebody might have needed that. There is quite a lot of that aqua blue kind of color here as well, especially here. So this is a fifth chakra thing going on here. Um, and fifth chakra can be like, yeah, you have to choose because you have to choose the words. You have to, you have to decide. But in the old take, I don't know if I said it in this one or the old take, but I said something about if you want a car, if you want a new car, like you get that and then the satisfaction of that will wear off and you want the next thing. So, and I do explore this. I'm going to explore a bit of this in group three as well. So this thing about why live life from dream to dream and dread the day that dreaming ends. Like, you know, okay, you get the new car, you get the amazing house, you get the this, you get the that, you get all these external things or you make all those dreams come true but then yeah do we dread the day that dreaming ends and I mean that's that could be that you know when we leave this earth you know mm. it's a beautiful song now I'm just trying to think of the song she sings one day I'll fly away leave your love till yesterday what more can your love do for me? When will love be through? Pretty sure those are the lyrics. It's a bit of a love song. I wonder if we've got a bit of a love situation happening here. I mean, we do have the sun here. And interesting, we do have the moon, kind of the king and the queen. There could be some, a bit of love energy here as well. And I mean, gosh, if it's a question that the universe wants to ask, we've got two questions right here. Why live life from dream to dream and dread the day that dreaming ends? Wow, maybe these are the questions. I mean, from my interpretation, I got the fact that the question is, we can accelerate your manifestation, take some time to choose, but then do choose. Make a choice, make it you know, and, and work with me. I think the universe is kind of like, work with me, we'll make it happen together. Because it is you and the all that you are a part of. That's who we work with. And I think take as much time as you need, because you want to be right, don't you? You, you? you don't want to get the universe to accelerate just any old thing, <laughs> you know. This is also reminding me of Eckhart Tolle. He said that he had been helping people, he'd been writing and doing all these things, and then at one point he felt that things were really slow, and he said to the universe, I want acceleration. And, and that is definitely the feel that I got from this spread, that the universe is kind of offering acceleration in some direction. It's just a matter of you need to choose the direction. So see how you go with the messages from this reading. I hope this has been a good reading for you. Please do let me know in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. I tend to take a bit of time to get back on the, um, on the comments for these, but I will get back to you. So, and your feedback always helps me keep going and keep putting these together. So thank you so much to those of you who comment and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two, then you are in the right place. Also, if you chose this 
tourmalinated quartz point. I love this one. It's so pretty. I love all of them. <laughs> I love all the three crystals that came. I ordered them online and they turned out to be really good. Now, as with all of my readings, take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't because not everything is necessarily for everyone, but there'll be some messages in here that really are for you. So no place like home. This has come up before in a reading. It's so interesting that the same cards keep coming up and it's like I shuffle the cards really well and yet sometimes the same oracle cards just keep appearing. So that's what it is. Uh, we've got the Five of Cups in Reverse. We've got the Ace of Swords in Reverse. We've got the Six of Cups in Reverse. Yeah. Try and, I know, move that. These will all fit, I just know it. <laughs> they did for group one. There we go. Okay. You've got the North Node. So is there destiny and challenges, the North Node? Doesn't that look so cool? I love these. What is it? Foil, gold foiling. I love cards with foiling in them. Okay, and we've got the King of Cups in reverse. And we've got the Ace of Swords, Upright. I'm remembering you now, Group 2. I drew these earlier in the morning. I took a quick look, then I got involved in my day, and now I have time to record this, and I'm remembering what I thought. So what question would the universe ask of you? And I think there could be quite a couple of questions. One that came to mind as I was looking earlier was that if your mind was a house, what would you furnish it with? And what would you put in there and what would you get rid of? Okay, so that's a kind of interesting question, but there's, it kind of stems from this card, which is there's no place like home. And a lot of us actually live in our minds. And I started thinking that way because you've got two Ace of Swords cards from two different decks. <coughs> you've got two different Ace of Swords cards from two different decks. And look, I've drawn from one, two, three, four decks this time. So to get two of the same is pretty amazing. You've got one in reverse and one upright. Now, how I'm reading this is I'm reading this to say that I think you've got quite some level of mastery over the mind in that I think you've delved and gone into when the mind isn't working so well. I think you're not afraid to look and I think you are courageous and you see everything, you know, I don't see I don't see or feel too many kind of um, dark corners that you don't explore. No, that's not the case. You're quite fearless with the mind. You've got the Ace of Swords in the upright position as well. So in the reverse and in the upright, to me, this is showing mastery of the mind, both the deep, dark places and, you know, the light, bright places, right? And it's like, you, you know, you know, the whole thing with the mind. So if your mind was a house, <laughs> right, funny concept, isn't it? But like, yeah, if your mind was a house, what ideas would you furnish in there? And the reason I started thinking about what would you furnish, what would you put in this great mind of yours? And interestingly, yeah, there's a spiral staircase as well. I think this is also the visuals of this. It's like a spiral staircase in the mind. So it's making the mind like a house. You know, there'll be different floors and there'll be different places to put different things. And we've got these kind of mathematical equations and we've got, you know, um, 
infinity symbol and all these different things and I was thinking about what would I want to furnish my mind with and for me it's very much Vedic astrology knowledge I would want you know more of that I want to learn more I want to read more books I want to learn more yoga there's so many things I want to do there's so many things I want to furnish my mind with and that's very much the north node it's Rahu it's you know what do you want to chase after what do you want to collect what do you want to bring into your space kind of thing but equally, I also thought that the universe is kind of giving you an opportunity to, to look at the past in a new way. And I love this spread. This spread really got me thinking about many things in my life too. And we've got this heartbreak energy in reverse. So some of you might be coming out of heartbreak. Okay, it's very possible. Uh, at this time so that's kind of general message but when this is in the upright position it's very much about there's loss there's heartbreak you know you're crying over the three that got spilt you're not really grateful for the two that are still here when this is in the reverse position it could be that you're coming out of heartbreak could even be that you're resisting going deeper into the emotions of heartbreak and that kind of thing. There's also this card which in the upright position, Six of Cups, is very much a card of nostalgia. And when I see this upside down, sometimes I think that you're not being nostalgic and you're being in the now. So that's a really positive card in the reverse, you know. Uh, that's one of the ways I like to read it. This is to do with heartbreak because we've got the cups here. I mean, we've got all three. These are cups. All of these are cups. So there is something to do with emotions. And when I was thinking about this in terms of the universe asking you a question, so if your mind is a house and you get to put cool stuff in there, well, what about, what, like, what about the things that you want to take out or you want to do some clutter clearing or... You know, this is kind of interesting because I thought about my desk and how here in Sydney, this doesn't happen in London so much, but in Sydney, I have to dust my desk every day because there's so much dust, like it's just dust everywhere. And I was thinking about how heartbreak and some of these negative emotions, you know how sometimes it's really hard to let someone go from the past and you keep thinking about them or memories keep coming up or all this kind of thing. And I was thinking about how Memories of these people from the past or whatever it is, maybe that's like dust on the table, you know, and part of like part of me living in this house is that I have to frequently dust this room. Like I you know, I have various cloths and I just have to keep dusting and that but that's fine, that's perfectly fine. I love this room so much and I I don't want to be anywhere else and I'm super happy. But, you know, I have to do some dusting. And I thought that, is that a bit like how we let go of some old flame or some old romantic connection? Maybe is that like the dust? And we just have to keep kind of, just keep kind of dusting kind of thing. Just like, is there something like that? And I also thought about what if the universe could ask us, like what if the universe said to us, if I could take your heartbreak away completely which one would you want me to take away so that there would be no trace of any memory left of that person what if the universe asked you that question and I started thinking about that and I went oh and I realized that I wouldn't want anyone to be taken away because even though okay those things didn't work out or whatever it is like I'm still richer for it. I'm still richer for the experience. I'm still, it's still, yeah, those experiences are still a part of me and there's so many good things and good times and all that kind of thing. So this was fascinating when I started thinking of all these things, especially this powerful question of, yeah, if the universe stepped in and said, okay, your mind is a house, you can furnish it with whatever you want. But as for this heartbreak energy, would you like me to take it all away 
such that it never happened and it will never happen again. And yeah, for me, I kind of thought even if I've had bad experiences or whatever, I actually, I feel richer for those. And I started thinking about how like, you know, when you're on the battlefield, like, yeah, you're going to have scars and you're going to have scratches. And I was thinking about how, yeah, like I prefer a body that has scars and, you know, scratches or whatever. Like, yeah, I started thinking all these things. It was so fascinating, guys. This was this. I love this spread. It really got me thinking. So anyway, let's take a look and see what song accompanies this. I have no idea. But I do think that the universe is overall, I mean, I think the universe is sort of saying, if your mind was a house, how would you furnish it? And equally, how would you dust away the things that need dusting? And you know what? Sometimes things need regular maintenance. It needs, you know, you need to keep dusting kind of thing. And that's okay. That's, that's part, of, it's part of living here on Earth. Oh, how interesting. Snow Patrol. Wow, that is interesting. Just say yes. Just say there's nothing holding you back. It's not a test nor a trick of the mind. Only love. Just say yes. Wow, Snow Patrol. Interesting. And I mean, these are great lyrics for Mr. Rahu here. I mean, gosh, who's, 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 who's Mr. Yes, you know, in the universe? this one here just say there's nothing holding you back it's not a test nor a trick of the mind only love this doesn't this sound like rahu singing this is a rahu song this is great just say there's nothing holding you back yeah absolutely i mean look when i came to this concept on this point of nothing holding you back, when I came to this concept of heartbreak and those old memories being like dust, that actually put it into a lot of perspective for me because it made me realize, yeah, there's nothing holding me back. Because, okay, it's a little bit of dust that accumulates on my desk every now and then and I have to dust it, but that doesn't hold me back at all. Like I go ahead and create things and I make videos and I do readings and, you know, um, I'm not going to let some dust hold me back. <laughs> it's not a, a test nor a trick of the mind, only love. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. But I, I love this spread. I, I really enjoyed this one. It got me to think quite deeply. I think it was a Theodore Roosevelt quote that came into my mind where he said something about, I'd rather be the person on the battlefield with the scars and the all of that rather than being a perfect critic kind of thing. And yeah, I kind of came to that conclusion when I started looking at bad memories from the past or whatever or to do with the heart. And I sort of started thinking, yeah, would I, if the universe could take that away permanently, would I want that? I actually wouldn't. Isn't that interesting? And I don't know, it might be different for you. You might look back and you might, and you might say to the universe, oh yes, please, take, take that stuff away. And that's great too. That's important. You do that, you know. Through this contemplation, you'll come to knowing what you, what impulse you like and what makes sense to you. And sometimes it's just nice to hear someone else's take. But equally, I think be creative with this spread. And I think see what meaning and meanings you would want to draw out of it, especially if the universe is asking you, you know, hey, I can... Think, view, view your mind like a house. So what do you want to put in? What do you want to take out? And if the universe is asking you, hey, I can take something away permanently so there's no trace, what would you want gone? And you know, uh, I think, oh, that's totally possible. Yeah, there are so many things I've completely forgotten. <laughs> and it's interesting when you talk to people you have shared memories with and they remember something that you, and you were there, but you totally forgot that. Isn't it interesting what we remember and why? It's always a fun thing to contemplate. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. I've enjoyed this so much. Thank you so much for bringing these cards through because it really it gave me a lot of food for thought today. So thank you so much for that. And I look forward to seeing you next time.
Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, then you are in the right place. Now, one of you very brilliantly told me exactly what this is and I've forgotten, but <laughs> was it, I think it's volcanic. Is that right? I'm not sure. I think it's black tourmaline, guys. Um, and I'll, I'll put some information if I can find what my lovely viewer told me. Oh, it's not focusing. Come on, there we go. Yeah, my lovely viewer told me what this is and look at me, I've already forgotten. It's so terrible. But I'm pretty sure he said something about it being volcanic. Am I right? I'll check that out, don't worry. Anyway, let's get on with your reading. Oh, it's gone all blurry. What's it doing? Okay, there we go. Let's get on with your reading. Um, group number three, we're gonna take a look at your cards one by one and this gives you a chance to see what comes into your consciousness as I go through them. Oh, I remember you. This is a great group. They were all great this time. I loved them all. Really great cards for all three. Okay. Got the five of swords in reverse. Okay. But yeah, take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't because these are general readings and, you know, it's just something for contemplation, um, like a mirror or something. Page of Pentacles in the reverse. We've got the Nine of Wands in the reverse. We've got the full moon. How beautiful. Look at that. Love the gold foiling on these cards. It's just so cool. I love shiny things. <laughs> I'm a simple person. I love shiny things. Uh, and now, were these? I think these were in the reverse, weren't they? Got the strength card in the reverse. And we've got the knight of swords in reverse. Okay interesting that I said that you guys I, when I was in group one I said group one people might have something in common with group three and I'm looking at this now and I tell you there's there's a stark contrast as well between you and group one which I didn't realize when I was in group one the stark contrast is that group one was a very high energy group and I felt like the universe has a lot of energy for group one and, and to get group one going and come on what do you want to do Yours is similar but different as well because there is there's a bit of a low energy situation going on here. We've got strength reversed. We've got this in the reverse position, the nine of wands. Often when this is upright, it's like you're kind of, um, I mean, you're working really hard, okay, for a start. So you're working very hard. You're coming to, we've got a number nine here, so you're coming you're just about to complete but gosh it's tiring and it's hard and you're working really hard and, and, and you certainly are working hard now when this is in the reverse one of the things I got here when I looked at all of these together so one of the things I do is I, I sometimes synthesize everything and for me the situation that you're in is being drawn out by these five cards whoops here these cards here what I'm seeing is that you're in the rat race, okay? You're in some situation where you're working very hard and I'm calling it the corporate rat race. I think you're working hard. I think because of this number nine, I feel like you are, I think you're working very hard at whatever it is you do and I think you're at quite a high level of what it is that you do or you're senior or you're getting up there and, but it is feeling a bit of a hard slog. I think you're tired. We've got strength in reverse. I think there's definitely some tired sort of energy going on here. When it's in the reverse like this, yeah, I'm, I'm just reading that as being tired. And this is, when it's upright, it can be an empty victory. Because, look, he's happily taken these three swords, but kind of people have abandoned the game. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I don't particularly see that he's, um, he's a bit smug, and I don't know if he's used the right means to get these anyway. So this is a bit of a problem card. In its reverse position, 
you see, I, that's not you. <laughs> okay, let's just, that, this is not you. Well, I, the other thing I got is that I think you're working at a very high level. I think you're, they, yeah, they felt like a justice component needed or I don't know. And I got a real rat race feel, a real like, man, how long do I need to keep doing this for? I definitely got that vibe. I've got the page of pentacles here in reverse. I mean, you are, look at that. You're squirreling away. You're working. You're building your abundance. But in its reverse, it's kind of like, I don't know, to me, all of these together, I just synthesized them and I got rat race. <laughs> that's how I did it. I uh, Yeah, that's, that's what came through. Now, in this situation that you're in, a lot of coaches would ask the question, they get you to imagine. And they get you to imagine and say, okay, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? What would you do? And I thought deeply about that question recently, and I have discovered that that is actually the wrong question to ask. And as I've been going through these cards and putting together this reading this time, the universe is going to step in and it's going to ask you a much better question. The universe is going to ask you, not if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? The universe is going to ask you, if you had no money, what would you do? That's a very different question. Okay. Let's say the universe was to take you out of the corporate rat race or whatever rat race you're in that is probably stressful. You're trying to make the money. You're trying to get to that next level. It's tiring. It's not easy. Let's say the universe was to take you out of this and was to pay for your immediate needs, basic needs, just cover your bills for about, let's say, a year. Let's be really generous and say a year, okay? And that in that situation, you have to do something. You have to reach within and you have to give something, okay? When you've got all the money in the world, well, then you'll just start thinking about pleasure. You'll start thinking only about pleasure that, oh, well, then I'll do this holiday and then I'll go there and then I'll buy this car and then I'll do this thing. And it's just pleasure. But when you're in a situation and imagine, imagine you're in a situation where you can be taken out of this rat race your basic, basic minimum needs are met. What is it that you give from within yourself to the world? Now, if we look closely at this card, see, and I look closely at this card today, and this is what occurred to me. That's actually a balloon. There is a face there as well. I'm sure you can see that. It's a bit spooky. <laughs> but I was really looking at this moon, and I realized it's a balloon because it's tied to a string. Can you see that? And the string, she's holding it. And I feel like, this is how I interpreted this in the context of all that's going on here. I interpreted this as being, this is her creation. This is what she's giving to the world. This is what she makes. She makes these beautiful balloons and maybe they make children really happy or they're used in parties or something like that. Maybe she made one or two and people, because this is some genuine creativity from her heart, People love it. They're just going wild for it and everyone wants to buy it and she's making all this money and she doesn't need this corporate rat race or this highly structured, competitive, you know, you work really hard and you only get a little bit, you're burdened, you're tired, you know, you want to have a few sharp words with someone, right? Don't have to do that. If you give from within your heart what it is that you've been born to give. And you will do that in a situation where you have to. You see, if you had all the money in the world, and I've discovered this recently, that that is really not the right way to go about, you know, uh, when, when coaching or that's a classic coaching thing. It's a classic, you know, if you had all the money in the world and, and somehow from that, you're supposed to find your inner gifts. Well, I actually think, you need a little bit of pressure. Uh, and I actually think, imagine, so the universe is asking you the question, imagine, what would you do if you had no money? 
And when I mean no money, I'm kind of mean no money, like in quote marks, like so as in no spare money. Okay, basic needs are met. What do you do? How do you, and this is the thing of the full moon, right? This is, look at that, we've got the words, what do we have here? Energy peak, harvest, harvest, blessings, achievement. This is you cashing in on you, your stuff. This is, this is you drawing down your money, right? And, and that's coming from here as well. This is you tapping your riches. And that's within you. It's not outside. So important that we learn this thing about, yeah, what's outside. And I think, you know, I think in group one, we did touch on this a little bit where we kind of talked about, you know, you could buy a new car, you could buy a new house, but you'll be bored of that. Like, or after a while, by the way, I'm going to draw a song lyric right now. Um, after a while, like, yeah, you, you get the new thing and, and, but like it just, it wears off quickly, doesn't it? When it's some external thing. Whereas when it's something that you're giving out from you, from your heart, and there's something that you do. And look at the, the other thing I thought about with this is look at your Ketu placement. What have you mastered in past lives? You've mastered a ton of stuff. Are you tapping it? Are you using it? Are you giving it out to the world? If you do that, your abundance will come in and you won't need any of this, right? So amazing. Okay, let's take a look. I love doing these cards because cool wisdom comes through and crystallizes because of the cards that you guys draw through, you know? And sometimes I might have a bit of a half-baked thought in my mind like last week, but then you guys draw through these cards and then things crystallize and I'm like, oh, that's why I thought about that. So amazing. Okay, let's see what song you got. This is gonna be quite interesting. What? Oh, wow. Wow. I just found out there's no such thing as the real world. Just a lie you've got to rise above. Wow. No such thing. John Mayer. I love this song. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the song. I want to run through the halls of my high school. I want to scream at the top of my lungs, something like that, I don't know. But, <laughs> but these are the lines that we've been given. Let's work with just these. I just found out there's no such thing as a real world, just a lie you've got to rise above. I mean, look at that, what is the lie? It's the rat race. It's the mainstream corporate world. It's all the stuff that we've been sold, you know, and that you have to do this and you have to wear these clothes or whatever. I mean, I don't know, because <laughs> I, don't, I don't really participate in the real world anymore. <laughs> um, I'm out here in, in the make-believe. Just a lie you've got to rise above, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it's okay. Look, I'm not, the other thing is I'm not saying that this is bad either. And I know for myself that, and I'm willing to go back to the, the corporate world and to do that again if I have to. And I think actually because I'm willing and I'm cool about it. That's kind of why, in a weird way, it has dried up for me in such a way that I'm now having to create my new path, which is what I'm doing now. Um, because if I was resistant and I hated it and I was afraid of progressing in there, I'd probably have to stick around. I'd probably still have work to do, if you know what I mean. Sometimes like when you're, when you're totally at peace, like, oh yeah, I could go back. Uh, then you're done with it, <laughs> you know. It's kind of weird. It's that Byron Katie thing, if any of you have ever watched her. She's absolutely amazing. Well, guys, I'm going to leave it there. This has been such a joy. Thank you for bringing these cards through me because it helped me crystallize some thoughts I've got going in my mind, and um, it's a great spread. So I, I think the universe definitely wants you to, to imagine and imagine what it is that you're going to give from you that's uniquely you okay well thank you so much for watching and yeah let me know how you get on in the comments below and otherwise i look forward to seeing you next time